Aldebaran is an orange giant star and is the brightest one in the constellation of Taurus. It is easy to find in the night sky because of its brightness and proximity to some of the sky's most visible objects, such as the Pleiades and Hyades star clusters. Orion's belt is also useful when trying to find this star. The name Aldebaran is derived from the Arabic phrase meaning the follower, as it appears to follow the Pleiades star cluster across the sky. It first makes its appearance in late November and can be seen throughout February and even into March. In this video, we will explore the system of Aldebaran, which is very different from our own star, and some strategies on how to find it in the night sky. Let's look at some of the characteristics of Aldebaran so you know what this system is like when you're outside looking at it. It's classified as an orange giant star. It's estimated to be 65 light years away, and it's much bigger and brighter than our own sun. If you look at the radius here, it's 45 times that of the radius of our sun. That's what this symbol means here. And then its luminosity is over 500 times that of our sun as well. But its mass is about the same of our own home star, and we'll talk about why that is in the next part of this video. Its rotation takes about 520 days, and it is a variable star, which means that its brightness can change throughout the course of the night. It does happen to have an exoplanet around it, and we'll explore what that potential system is like. And just to be clear where Aldebaran is in this photo, if we look here, it's this star. It kind of has an orangish hue to it. It's not this one. This happens to be a planet. And remember that Taurus is a zodiacal constellation, so the planets do pass through it. To understand why Aldebaran and our sun are so different, we have to look at the life cycle of a star. Both stars are at totally different stages of their lives. Our sun is still in the main sequence phase, and this is where the forces of gravity and fusion are balanced. It's a steady star that is fusing hydrogen in its core. Aldebaran, on the other hand, has evolved off the main sequence band. This means a star no longer fuses hydrogen in the core. Instead, hydrogen fusion takes place in the outer layers, and this causes the star to expand. Helium fusion now takes place in the core, and the surface temperature of the star cools down. These type of giant stars glow brighter just because of their enormous size. Let's take a look at where both Aldebaran and the Sun sit on the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram. Remember that the HR diagram for short shows us how bright a star is versus its temperature. And you'll notice there is this band that goes across the whole diagram, and this is known as the main sequence band. And this is where a star spends 90% of its life. So if we compare the two stars, this is where the Sun is. It's in its main sequence phase. But Aldebaran is here. It's larger, it's bigger, brighter, and it has a cooler temperature. So down here you can see the surface temperature of a star versus luminosity and measurement of suns, and then over here, absolute magnitude. So it's important to understand how to read this diagram. I do have a whole video about the HR diagram. I'll leave the link in the information below. So be sure to check that out if you want to learn more. Aldebaran is an enormous orange-colored star that marks one of the eyes of Taurus the bull. It also marks one point of the V-shape of the bull's face. This star looks like it could be a part of the Hyades star cluster. However, it is located 65 light years away, while the Hyades star cluster is estimated to be 150 light years away. There are five faint stars that are visible near Aldebaran. However, it is unclear if these stars are gravitationally bound Found to the main giant star. In 2015, an exoplanet was detected called Aldebaran b, a Jupiter-like gas giant. This planet has a close orbit to Aldebaran, and it does not sit within the range in which liquid water can exist. Its mass is about 6.47 Jupiters, and it takes 1.7 years to make one orbit around Aldebaran, and it was detected through the radial velocity method. 
Pioneer 10, a NASA space probe launched in 1972, will come in contact with the Aldebaran system in 2 million years as it is headed in that general direction of the sky. Pioneer 10 was the first artificial satellite to achieve the escape velocity needed to leave the solar system. And while NASA is no longer in contact with it, its last transmission was in 2003. It is really awesome to just think about when you look at that star that a trace of our civilization from now will be near this star system at some point. Finally, let's review how to find Aldebaran in the night sky. It really is one of the easiest stars to find, and not just because it's bright, but because it sits to a lot of things that are easy to ID in the sky. So this is the best picture to use to show you how you can find it. If you can find and look at Orion right here, which most people can recognize, you want to use the belt stars to aim you right towards Aldebaran, and then look for that V shape in the night sky. This is the V-shaped face of Taurus, and of course you probably have noticed the Pleiades star cluster. So try to use the Pleiades, the Hyades star cluster, and Orion's belt stars to help you find Aldebaran. Let's take a look at a few more pictures just to make sure you know how to find Aldebaran. As you look at this photo, notice Orion towards the bottom middle of the photograph, and then identify the belt stars. Then use the belt stars to point you upwards in this photograph to find the v-shaped face of taurus if you look towards the upper middle you will find the pleiades star cluster and in case you need everything pointed out this here is orion you want to use the belt stars aim you up towards aldebaran and the v-shaped face this is the horns or both here these are the horns of taurus and then you have the pleiades right there are you able to find Aldebaran in this photo? Hopefully you can see the Pleiades. That's the first thing I look at because it's just this tiny little cluster of stars. Then move downwards and here's that V shape. And this is Aldebaran. And remember this area right here, this is the Hyades star cluster. It's about 150 light years away, but Aldebaran is not a part of that star cluster. It just happens to be sitting next to it as we look at it from our viewpoint. And then finally, we've got one more picture here. Can you find the Pleiades and then aim yourself downwards, find that V-shaped face, and then you will find Aldebaran. So I hope this is helpful for you in order to identify this star. You now know it's a orange giant star and there is an exoplanet going around it. Before we wrap up this video, I wanted to share some resources with you, one of which is Eyes on Exoplanets. So once I learned that Aldebaran has an exoplanet, I wanted to check out and see what this system looks like. So you can do the same. You have access to this and I'll leave this in the information below so you can check out eyes on exoplanets i know it's not the first time i have shared this resource but you can look at alpha tari b that's the name of this exoplanet you can look at its system as a whole so if you look here this green shaded area is where liquid water could exist and if we zoom in here, you can see that this planet is quite close to Aldebaran. And you can also compare the solar system as well. So I like going to the planet actually, taking a look at it and comparing the planet to first Jupiter. That's what Jupiter is in terms of size, but then you can also compare it to Earth. So it's definitely bigger than our own planet, and rightfully so, as it's a gas giant. You can also look at the star system. So here is Alpha Tari, which is what astronomers would call it. That's the designation they have. And you can kind of zoom out here and see where the planet is. You can compare the star to our sun. So as you can see, the sun is much smaller than this orange giant star. So I encourage you to check out Eyes on Exoplanets. It's always lots of fun to play with, and you can basically explore all the exoplanets that have been detected so far, and you can gather that information just by exploring this website. 
The other resource I wanted to share with you is something called 100,000 Stars. It's a Chrome experiment. It was first launched in 2012, and so it's it's kind of an old resource, but I love it. I haven't found anything that's kind of better than this, but it shows you our Milky Way, and then you can zoom in all the way into where our sun is and all the stars that are around us, and also you can... Um, these are actually all the stars that are around us, but it, it takes a look at the brightest ones. And you can click on any of these stars and it will zoom in there and give you some information about it. Here is Vega, one of my favorite stars. I do have a video on that one. But then you can... Um, you can click, you can learn about the star, and then it'll zoom you back out. And you can kind of manipulate this in all kinds of different directions. And I find this just helpful to give me a sense of where stars are in relation to each other. So I definitely encourage you to check out this great animation, and I'll leave the link in the information below. There is a lot more to say about this star, especially since Aldebaran holds cultural significance in many different mythologies and areas in the world. And it has been a subject of interest for astronomers and stargazers, both in the past and modern astronomy as well. So I'm going to save some of that research and storytelling for a different video. But let me know in the comments below, do you have any special story that's associated with this star in your area of the world? Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're able to find Aldebaran in the sky and know what you see when you look up. Thank you again, and as always, keep looking up.